and I was working actually at the YMCA. Uh, I drove by. I didn't, you know, after I lost the business, I was like, what the, what the heck am I going to do now? So I drove by YMCA. I was like, hmm, maybe we need a trainer in there. I didn't have a trainer license or anything like that. And I walked in there to YMCA, and I said, it was brand new. It was just open for like six weeks. It was Lake Nona here, southeast Orlando. And the girl in front, I said, yeah, I think we're looking for a trainer. So I talked to uh, Human Resources. Yeah, we're looking for a trainer. I said, well, I don't have any certification yet. Oh, you can get it while we go along. So, uh, <laughs> so I got one while I went along, and uh, I made eight dollars an hour, which uh, you know, owning a two million dollar business, going back to eight dollars an hour, you know, wasn't all that that easy. But I knew, you know, it'll be okay. Something will happen. So, and I was always dreaming, how can I find? Or I would love to find somebody that has a lot of potential, and take my philosophies or whatever I learned and put it on them and see if I can make that person better. So uh, along came this woman right here. Uh, she moved to Orlando, and she was looking for a trainer. At that time, I started to work with a lot of my friends, wakeboarders and skiers. Uh, one of them is Darren Shapiro, and I'll tell you about him here in a minute. And uh, I helped them with their stuff, and I put my program on them. And with, those guys were my proving grounds. Of course, those guys you can't hurt. They're all 17, 18, 19 years old. We're not afraid to fall or you know, do dumb stuff, so we did a lot of trial and error with them. Uh, but anyways, she was interviewing trainer, and her husband was interviewing different trainers here in Orlando. And there's a, there's a lot of trainers in Orlando, especially for golf, because I want to say 50% of the PGA lives here, and probably 60% of the LPGA lives here. Of course, it's so good to be in Orlando for golf. And uh, you know, they decided on me. I don't know why, really. I had no clue about golf. Uh, why would I watch women's golf? <laughs> I wasn't extreme sports, you know, all my all my life until then. So women's golf, come on. So, anyways, uh, I met her, and the good thing was that I didn't know about golf. I think, uh, of course, I didn't have any pre-existing knowledge or conceptions or whatever you want to call it. And uh, I saw her. I recognized right away in the first hour we worked together that she's a true athlete. And. Uh, I used the same program I used with my wakeboarders and skiers and put it on her, which at that time, fitness for golf was a little bit of rubber band, a little bit of jogging on the treadmill, and a lot of stretching. So on the even thing about picking up a dumbbell, you know. So on the man's side, it was Tiger. On the women's side, it was Annika. And uh, it worked out very well. You know. uh, right here, why mess with success for her? It was 2001. She was the number one player in the world. She won eight LPGA win uh, tournaments that year. Nobody's ever done that before, up to that time. Why would she want to change something? Why would she want to go and start working out all of a sudden now? Uh, pursuit of perfection, how can I improve? That was her question. She was 54th in driving distance, 15th in accuracy. She wanted to prove that golf can be an athletic sport or is an athletic sport. And now you see it. You know, the ones that win the most are the fittest ones, which is Tiger. It was her. She retired last year. Uh, Lorena Ochoa, uh, you know, uh, Trevor Immelman, he won, won the Masters, really fit guy. So, uh, they changed the face of golf in that regard. You know, they're getting fitter and fitter. Uh, she wanted to prove I'm an athlete, and uh, she wanted to prove golf is a real sport. Which way to go? The state of fitness in golf, like I said, only rubber bands, a little this and that. The fear of doing a wrong fitness. Uh, I saw the athlete Nanika and the type of workout I put on her, and we did a lot, a lot, a lot of heavy weights. She did 300-pound squats, 150-pound bench press, which is quite a bit for a woman. Uh, we did a lot of uh, chest stuff, back stuff, a lot of traditional you know, workouts, so to speak, uh, along with other stuff. But uh, it worked out really well. Uh, in November 2001 till April 2002, she gained 20 meters, that's about 22, 23 yards, which for a professional golfer is a whole lot. That was almost 10% for her. That made a huge difference right there. She uh, went uh, to number one in driving distance and at the same time to number two in accuracy, which uh, was unheard of. Everybody would say, if you hit it longer, you're going to lose your accuracy. Well, she managed to, to do both. Uh, increased balance and powerful shots from a rough and bunker, improved energy, energy and stamina. 13 wins worldwide in 2002, which means she won over 50% of the tournament she entered in 2002. Nobody ever done that before. Female athlete of the year, twice in a year. It was all of all female athletes. So she beat a lot of good athletes, uh, a lot of Olympians, uh, which was, you know, for me, actually, I mean, I was very, very happy about that, to take a golfer and make him female athlete of a year. Uh, and obviously, from, from my side, she is a dream client. Uh, she is probably the smartest person I know. And uh, she's unbelievably dedicated, and I learned a lot from her. 
and uh, what she did in her golf career, she's doing her fitness career, in her uh, business career now. It's just unbelievable what the woman is doing. Uh, a true inspiration. Uh, here's just a few pictures left. Uh, it was in her gym, actually. Uh, in the middle right here, just typical that little fist pump. Not quite as big as Tiger's, but uh, a good start. Uh, on the right, you see we did a lot of pull-ups, a lot of push-ups. The main thing for me was to get a woman stronger from here to here. From here on down, we're almost as strong as we are, as the guys are. From here on up, you only have half a muscle fiber as we do. So it was very important to get a stronger upper body, especially for golf, especially to hit longer and to learn how to hit it like a guy. Of course, we kind of whack it a little bit more. Women kind of guide it a little bit more. So uh, it was very important to get a stronger upper body. She, uh, she couldn't do a pull-up in her matter, and I bet her she won't do one within the next four weeks. And she bet me $20, and at last she did four of them within three weeks. Uh, and I learned right away, never bet the woman. And uh, she would do a lot of bets in, uh, in tournaments, before tournaments, in practice rounds, and I've never seen her lose. So here she does pull-ups with 25 pounds uh, hanging on her hips. And that's quite a feat for a woman. Principles of right training. So while I was going along, I came up with some principles. And I just want to uh, quickly go through it. You have it in your papers. And uh, I'm not here to teach you your training principles. But maybe you can pick up a few ideas or research a little bit about it. 50% mechanical improvement. 50% is nervous system improvements. Uh, you are a product of your training. A lot of times we see people, and I'm talking obviously about you know, high performance people. Uh, I know your job, a lot of times, is a lot harder working with people that need to lose weight or that don't really want to work out, but they have to work out. And I think your job is a lot harder than mine. Of course, the people that come to me, they really want to come. And their job is to work out and get stronger and get better. Uh, for you, a lot of people, they have to come. And have tos are never good. So uh, I think it's your job, probably, to turn the have tos into a want to. And that's a very hard job. So. Uh, but we see a lot of times people, when we work out and they do their reps, you know, there's like no thought into it. And the way I see it, every single rep has to be perfect every single time. Just if you would practice your golf swing, if you practice hitting some balls, you put one ball down, you concentrate, think what you want to do, you hit it. And that's the same way every single rep should be done. Uh, you don't want to just mix it up and do it, you know, mindless in front of the TV and uh, watching Oprah. Uh, Oprah, actually, today, 4 o'clock. Sean, I don't want to take your people away, but it's uh, Holyfield and Mike Tyson. Uh, and I wonder if it's live. I don't know. <laughs> but it might be a good show to watch. Sean, you might want to tape it for the guys. So <laughs> who knows what's going to happen there? Uh, perfect practice makes perfect movement. What we do most is what our body remembers, which is what we're going to do outside the gym. I carry over exercises. I don't need to tell you. I don't use any machines. I'm sure and hope you don't use any machines. It's all about standing up and doing things. So uh, the kettlebell movement, thank you. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff uh, going on out there. And uh, you know we're meant to stand up and move ourselves around. High carrier except fast twitch fiber or slow twitch fiber, I think very important. I don't do any high rep stuff. It's all low rep stuff, even for the golfers. No machines, power flow. Power flow is a little bit hard to explain. It's about forces flowing through your body. A physicist would explain it in impulses flowing through your body. When you lift something up or when you move something, it's impulses, electrical impulses flowing through your body. And it's very easy to clock them up. If they can't flow you through your body, you get very inefficient. And I'm sure some of you play golf and you know it. I mean, you're all fit in here, and you probably can't hit it anywhere. Uh, I have a girl. She is 13. She weighs 82 pounds. She was all proud about the last two pounds, the last four weeks. 82 pounds, she's one of the best golfers already. And uh, she hits at 240 yards. Uh, that's, that's quite a bit. You know, if I put her, I mean, I put her in the, on the upper body ergometer, she can put out maybe 150, 160 watts of energy. Uh, if I get on the upper body ergometer, I can put out 400, 450 watts. But uh, in my swing, I probably put out 350 watts. I put everything in it I got. Uh, you know, how can she hit it as long as me? with you know, only being able to produce 150 watts. Well, all her energy goes to the club. It goes to where it's intended to. My energy stays in my body because I'm gripping it too hard. I'm pulling. I'm pushing. I'm working too much. I'm stabilizing things that don't need to be stabilized. So that power flow is very, very important to learn that. And uh, you all are good at some sport, I'm sure. And you have that feeling where you did something really incredible and you didn't even feel it in your body. It just happened. And that's what you want to do in the gym. Learn that you know I'm I'm totally away from any isolation or squeezing a biceps or anything like that. It's all about letting it flow and let the energy go.